One of Paper Mario's finest aspects has always been the party system. It adds such an exciting layer of action to each fight, and the characters themselves are super well written. So today, we'll see if all of those party members in the Thousand Year Door could hold their own if Mario suddenly became sick or just too lazy to fight. That's right, you know where this is going. Can you beat Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door without Mario? The rules for this challenge are very straightforward. Mario may only use the guard command in order to shield himself and literally nothing else. He's not allowed to attack or use special attacks or items or run away or switch out partners or any of that stuff. There is one instance of the game that I can recall right now where we probably have to use Mario and that would be the prologue of the game. What? For that, I'll just try to damage Lord Crumb only by using the super guard. And that's all there is to it. Let's a go, man. Ah, the Mario Brothers house. Is there anything more comfortable than a lonely house on a small island? Who needs friends when you have the company of your closest bro? Oh, another adventure is calling. Mario is not amused. He still nauseous from that terrible vacation he had on Isla Delfina. Well, I guess when duty calls, it doesn't care about your feelings. Right now, Mario is desperately hoping that the steamer doesn't suddenly sink, because my man is made out of paper and there's no way he's getting out of that water when that happens. Not five minutes after arriving and we're already getting bullied. This was not how Mario envisioned his morning to play out. So this is the one fight where we might have to make an exception to the challenge, but after this, we can really get started. In order to beat Lord Crumb, I have to deal 5 damage to him. And the only way I can do that is by using Mario, because I don't have Goombella yet, and obviously Lord Crumb can't damage himself. Therefore, I just super guarded his attacks until he felt embarrassed enough to call it a day. After that, I hired Goombella as my first bodyguard. I thought very intensely about fighting Gus, but I decided not to risk it and let him be for now. And this was probably a good decision, seeing as how I literally died to the very first real enemies in the game. Okay, well, let me explain how that happened. We found ourselves ambushed by three Goombas. A normal one, a spiky one, and a flying one. Goombella cannot jump on the spiky one, so I had to try to kill him by super guarding his attacks. That being said, I kind of suck at super guarding, at least with certain enemies, and so I just straight up died. Now this highlights one of the huge negatives for myself in this run. If any of my companions ever die in action, that's game over for me because I can't switch them out or heal them with Mario. What are you doing? At the same time, Mario also can't die or it's game over. This makes this challenge so much spicier, oh man. I decided to make my life a bit easier and went to the shop to buy myself some mushrooms and fire flowers. Luckily, I didn't even have to use anything because I ended up killing him with the super guard after all. Great. I didn't waste a lot of time in Rogueport and went straight to Petalburg. Who knows, maybe Mario can take a better vacation here. On my way through there, I encountered these gorgeous massage balls. I was a bit afraid that I would have to fight them with Mario, since Goombella only deals one damage at this point and these guys also have a defense of one. However, not only could I easily kill them with a power block, but I was also able to just super guard my way through them as well. Now don't worry, if you think I'll just counter every single enemy in this playthrough, then I will sadly have to disappoint you. My skills with the super guard are not nearly good enough, as we've already seen earlier. My strategy this early in the game was to really try to fight most enemies on my way, just for the chance to level up a bunch in order to use more badges. Those things are a godsend. The Warm Fortress was fairly easy and after I got Koops as my next thug for hire, I also didn't have to be afraid of spiked enemies anymore. 
Hooktail's castle wasn't the most difficult thing, but Hooktail herself posed a way bigger threat. Yeah. The biggest problem I had with her was the fact that I couldn't use the sound badge that makes her weaker. Since Mario can't attack and the badge only affects his attacks and not any of the partners. Therefore I had to fight Hooktail with all of her might, which was quite a lot. To my luck, I had collected a few items on my way to her, which allowed me to stay in the fight a lot longer than I otherwise could have. The dragon's fire breath was the worst attack of them all, because it effectively reduced my HP by so much that she could kill any of my partners with only 3 hits. I was able to dodge a few of her attacks, but eventually my skills were no match for her horrible garlic breath. With my completely shattered ego, I retreated back to Rogueport to recuperate. I bought myself the quick change badge, which allows me to switch from one partner to the other without wasting my turn, which is a badge that's so incredibly valuable in this run, I can't even describe it with words. I would have even paid freaking 100 Robux for this one if I'd had to. Then I also upgraded Goombella to double her attack power and HP and I finally beat Gus's ass to restore my waning masculinity. After that I also wasted some time by doing side missions to earn some more money because this game isn't long enough anyways. I even went as far as to go through the first 10 stages of the Pit of 100 Trials just to get some more star points for my next level up. Long story short, I was pretty scared of Hooktail. Surprisingly enough, even with all of my preparation, this fight was still fairly close at times. Healing myself through items is sometimes pretty useless because I can only ever do a single action per turn, so whenever I heal myself, I am missing out on a chance to attack, which always further drags out the fights. Thankfully, I was able to defeat Hooktail by using a bunch of items and being lucky enough to dodge some of her attacks. Nice. We're probably all familiar with the story of the Thousand Year Door, so I'll spare you those details. Keeps the video a bit shorter. Our next stop happened to be the Boggly Woods and I started this chapter off by swiftly laying down a smacking on the Shadow Not-So-Beauties. I'm not gonna lie though, they sure know how to do some damage. Still, they were no match for the power of a super rank Goombella and a bag full of items. I wheeled Beldum into a retirement home and let the other two shadows go to spread the message, just like good old Volpes in Colta would do in Fallout New Vegas. Then I gained my third bodyguard and broke into the grey tree to get me that shiny shiny crystal star. Honestly. This tree was fairly uneventful as far as fights are concerned, so let's just jump ahead and talk about Senor Crump and his kinky pink Magnus suit. Right off the bat, I gave Goombella a protein shake mixed with some pre-workout and muscle protein synthesis immediately got to action and made her huge. With that, I proceeded to multibonk his pinkness a few times to deal some amazing damage. That being said, Lord Crump certainly did deal some good damage himself. To combat his rocket arms, I got some help from Zeus himself and then headbunked his ass back to his garage workshop where he built Magnus in the first place. Back in ye old Rogueport, I bought myself a Power Plus P badge which boosts the attack damage of all of my partners by one full point which is obviously very awesome this early in the game. I then did some side questing, selling, talking, all of that procrastination stuff and then took a flight towards the elusive glitz pit. I got thrown into the action straight away and busted out one victory after another until I was faced with this spiky trio of unfriendliness. They really had it in them. High attack power, high defense, Goombella was pretty much useless against them because of the Come spikes, on, so they proceeded to wipe the floor with me a few times. Eventually I proceeded to use Flurry to just blow two of them away and gang up on the last one. The next fight felt just like waiting at the train station in the middle of the night, cause these guys constantly try to steal my stuff and hit me in the face while doing so. Of course I ended up a few bucks shorter 
but I gained some valuable experience. Namely, don't be at the freaking train station at night and especially not by yourself. Sometime later, I caught myself a colorful egg and kidnapped it to try and sell it to the magician in Rogueport. He wouldn't take it, so I just went and upgraded Coops instead. I'm not sure why I did so many side missions, but I continued to take the egg down into the deadly and super dangerous pit of 100 trials, just to look for some random toad that was stuck down there. Shortly after arriving back in the glitz pit, the egg hatched and a pink Yoshi came out of it. I named him Septicai in honor of some other green haired fella, and because I couldn't think of a more creative name. In some of the fights in this arena, I actually had to run away because of the stipulations attached to them. I'm still not entirely sure if you actually have to do these, but sometimes Mr. Grubba tells you to do a specific action during the fight in order to appease the crowd. He would sometimes tell me to do something that only Mario could do, so I always ended up throwing in the towel and hoping to get some other stipulation. To my luck, this always worked out well. At some point Bowser also showed up after one of the fights, but he was literally the smallest piece of cake ever. Now, in the final fight of the arena against world heavyweight champion Rock Hawk, Grubba would not give me any other challenge than use one special move. I ran away from this fight twice, but he simply insisted on this specific task. Not having any other choice, I tried to complete this fight without the stipulation anyways. Lo and behold, I hit him with three multibongs and one body check by Madame Fleury, and the champ went down. No special moves were used, and Mario was standing at the top as the champion of the entire arena, without having lifted a single finger even just once. Afterwards, it was macho grubber time, baby. And while I still think he's one of the easiest bosses in the entire game, he actually managed to beat me a staggering three times. He just always mowed through me and hit Mario so hard in the head that he collapsed. To be fair, his cardiovascular system just isn't the same that it once was, now that he's not jumping and swinging anymore. Eventually, I was able to defeat him and wasted no time on my way to Twilight Town. If you are familiar with the events of this chapter, then you might be pretty interested to see what's gonna happen here. In the creepy steeple, I fought against this talking bedsheet who was pretty easily defeated. However, afterwards, he went on to literally commit identity theft by stealing Mario's likeness and all of his friends. This, my dear kids, is the equivalent to hacking into your friend's Snapchat profile. A very uncool thing to do. You just don't mess with a man's Snapchat streak. Mario, of course, was left to himself now. In a challenge where he couldn't do anything on his own. Walking back to Twilight Town as a shadow of my former self, I elegantly outmaneuvered all enemies I encountered. However, when I was faced with the beauty of my own mustache, I had no choice but to commit challenge fraud. I tried to give the ghost an appropriate name, but he wouldn't have it. He challenged me to a classic fisticuffs, but seeing as he wasn't actually able to deal any damage to me when I put up my guard, I had no choice but to retreat at last. I met up with the only Tinder date that would prefer a shadow instead of a manly Italian mustache, which meant that I finally wasn't alone anymore. With my newfound partner, I aimed to confront my Snapchat hacker. I was gonna show him how much those streaks meant to me. Unfortunately, my Tinder date left me on read in the early stages of the fight. But luckily, it was just her internet connection that made some trouble. Vivian proceeded to beat up my imposter, but he was able to defeat me once. My second attempt bore more fruit, and Duplis was defeated. My so-called friends then realized their mistake and came back to me. Arriving back in the RP, I spent some time upgrading my companions and did a side mission to get Miss Mouse as a partner. If you ask me, 
The more partners I have, the safer I probably am. Then I met Captain Flavio and he took me to Keelhaul Key. Ooh, Mario certainly had some flashbacks to the last time he was on an island. I pretty quickly acquired the services of Admiral Bobbery. Man, I have such a huge crew now. This chapter didn't have that much action in it, so we can focus right away on the main part. Fighting against Pirate King Cortez Barbosa. Thank you guys so much for some of your comments under my last Paper Mario video, because your advice made this fight ridiculously easy for me. After I defeated the first two phases of Cortez, I was easily able to blow away all of his weapons with the help of Flurry, which effectively turned him into just a regular enemy. Immediately afterwards, I got to fight against Recruit Trump. Oh, Crump. Who was literally almost easier than a weaponless Cortez. That being said, he was, surprisingly, still able to defeat me twice. Once because he managed to get Mario down to 0 HP, and once because he pushed over Koops, after which I was entirely defenseless. I hate Koops in this one. Oh my god, Koops. You've got to be kidding me. Get up, man. Come on, you're making a fool of yourself. You see, if any enemy jumps on Koops, he just collapses to the floor, unable to attack anything. And this continues for as long as anyone jumps on him, which theoretically could go on forever. Of course, since I can't use Mario to switch Koops out, that's pretty much a guaranteed game over for me. Then, for reasons beyond my understanding, I played some mini games in the Pianta parlor, listened to Frankie say I love you a hundred times, and took a relaxing trip on the train to Hogwarts. This chapter, of course, doesn't have a lot of action sequences either, so we can jump right ahead to one of the more difficult bosses of the game. Smork. Having learned from my previous experiences with him, I quickly went to the train's souvenir shop to deck myself in with boo sheets. To my dismay, I was sadly pretty broke. Damn it, I knew I should have done more of those side missions. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, when I fought against Smorg, he effectively destroyed me. I definitely needed more boo sheets. Before my second attempt, I spent some more time at the shop, selling any items that I still had stored and that weren't useful in my attempts against this huge monster on top of the train. Luckily, I made some good money doing that and ended up with a bag stacked full of boo sheets and some attack items. Fighting this thing again, I thought I would have had my victory guaranteed, but my greediness for quick success brought another failure upon me. Instead of hiding Mario under a boo sheet, I was simply hoping for some extra damage on my enemy, for which he quickly punished me. Deservingly, I had to go through all of that selling and buying once again, and then went on to finally beat him. At this point, I was only two chapters away from unquestionable victory, but oh boy, did those two chapters have it in them. Before I knew it, I found myself walking on the moon, where I was instantly killed by some ex nauts who managed to overthrow my boy Koops. From this point onwards, I tried to use him a lot less during fights. While I was exploring the ex nauts moon base, I used the opportunity to collect some very delicious star points from all of those foot soldiers walking around. There was one type of enemy throughout this entire run that I could barely ever defeat. And that was the ex yukes or cross yukes as their title entry calls them. Every time they attack, they form a shield around them which can only be destroyed by killing those smaller ex yukes first. Now that's not much of a problem when you have two characters to attack with, but if you can only do one attack per round, that gets very difficult to do. Therefore, I avoided them as much as possible and luckily there was never a fight where you had to defeat them. Finally, I got to fight against Lordius Krampus once more, oh, and it seemed like he put his workshop to good use. Magnus 2.0 was quite a bit stronger than the previous one, 
but I still managed to demolish it without a lot of problems. Although I had to make sure that Mario was constantly under a Koopa shell to avoid his death. The moon base got destroyed and we all found ourselves back in the place where it all started. Rock part. Now I only had a single chapter left between me and the end of the game. But let me just take something away by saying that I still had to play for a whopping 8 hours after this point to reach the credits. Before entering the thousand year door I spent some considerable time badging myself up. This area was just really hard to get through. I was on the verge of death very often and the fights would often take such a long time to be done, mainly because I was only hitting those enemies at half the rate that was intended by the developers. Of course I did get tremendous amounts of star points and level ups from all of those fights, which was certainly helpful in preparation for the final stages of the game. The number of badges that I had equipped grew continuously the further I progressed. Badge point was pretty much the only thing I ever invested in, which may or may not have been a good thing. Looking back on it, Mario could have certainly benefited from more HP, and more FP wouldn't have hurt either. About an hour into the Thousand Year Palace, I arrived at Gloomtail's lair, who was just itching to give me the beating he thought I deserved. And he certainly did. His poison hurt a lot and he did tank a lot of damage, but I was able to defeat him on my first attempt. Pretty soon after defeating Gloomtail, Beldam came out of the retirement home for an excursion to try and beat me up. I would be lying if I said that this fight was easy. All three of them hammering in on me certainly hurt, but it became a lot easier once Granny over here had to take her 1pm nap. I shrunk them down with septic eye and wailed on them as much as I could, now that I was finally bigger than them. They even gave me 50 star points for it, which was super nice. At this point I stepped out of the thousand year door and made my way to the pit of a hundred trials. I was certain that in order to defeat the final boss, I absolutely needed to have the big item bag that you get after completing the first 50 trials. Well, I spent 45 minutes to get down to level 50 and got the strange sack, but I didn't go back up. No, I made a big, big mistake by thinking that I was capable enough to defeat Bonetail at the end of the pit. I spent the next hour and a half fighting through all of the trials, surviving ever so slightly on a lot of them and crawling by my teeth towards the last trial. I made it until level 99, when I was one-shotted by an amazing daisy. Almost a full two and a half hours of my life, just wasted. I could have used safe states, but honestly I didn't think about it. I spawned back at the safe block that I had used before going down, and I didn't try again. I was empty inside and angry at myself. At my greed. After this blatant failure, I battled my way back down towards the final few fights. I arrived in the throne room of the palace and was greeted by my old friend Grody G. Fighting him was not very easy. His shield of mini X Yuxus occasionally blocked my attacks. He did pretty solid damage himself, and I failed to super guard almost any of his attacks. After dying a handful of times, I was able to defeat him with a lot of elbow grease and a healthy dose of items. Straight afterwards, I also had to fight Bowser and Kami Koopa, which was luckily easier than I expected. This fight also gave me another level up, which I was very happy about. With that, I finally defeated both Mr. x Not and Bowser. And then, nothing happened. For me at least, because I literally stopped playing this game for a solid two months, as my personal life started rumbling and shape-shifting like Mario when he's being cursed by Merli. 
When I returned, I was a bit surprised to find myself standing directly in front of the final boss of the game. And I was certain that I would probably want to shut down the game again. That fight just had to be horrible, right? Only using the partners? Who do I think I am? Anyways, I boldly hopped in there in the hopes of pulling an upset victory over the Shadow Queen and finally being able to enjoy the after party hosted by Flavio himself. Oh, was I wrong. The big bad queen was summoned and turned everything to darkness, probably to avoid that blue light before bedtime in order to have some better sleep. Don't get me wrong, I feel you, evil peach. Then she tried to hire me as her own thug and I accepted, in the hopes of skipping this fight altogether. Unsurprisingly though, I just ended up throwing the entire world into oblivion and I still only got a game over. Oh well. Then I took the more exhausting path of trying to fight her. My inventory was pretty lackluster because I hadn't restocked after fighting Grodus and Bowser, so my chances certainly could have been better. Really, one of the biggest obstacles in this fight was keeping Mario himself alive. A lot of my turns were spent only with protecting him in some way, which dragged this fight out for so long, since I could only ever hit the queen when Mario happened to be in a safe spot. I got her down to about one-fifth of her health in the final phase, but it sadly wasn't enough. If I had had an inventory stuffed full of boo seeds and life mushrooms, I certainly could have ended it right then and there but it wasn't supposed to be. Therefore, I had to once again run all the way out of the Shadow Palace in order to stock up on that good stuff. I also traveled around the world, searching for some more Shine Sprites to finally upgrade Miss Mouse, just in case I had to use her during the final fight. Finally, I returned and faced Peach once again. I remembered all of those cursed times that she bumped me in Mario Kart, Oh, she was gonna regret that. I definitely did not pull any punches. During the first phase of this fight, I tried everything I could to not use any items. But still, the Shadow Queen's damage was just way too high. Overall, I felt like my first attempt was a lot smoother than this one. Surviving until the last phase wasn't the easiest thing in the world, and of course, that's when the fight really started to gain momentum. I kept protecting Mario at all costs, but at the same time, I also took some risks to damage her even further. For this attempt, I gave some of my other companions a shot, instead of mainly using Vivian, Gumbella and Bobbery. Koops was a real treasure, because he could kill those hands with one swift PowerShell attack, which only cost me one flower point each because of these two badges that I had equipped. Next, I started using Flurryaton, not just due to the fact that she can protect Mario using the dodgy fog, and not just because she looks the way she does, but also because she can literally heal herself by sucking out some life from Dark Peach, dealing a staggering 8 HP of damage in the process. This was my go-to attack for the rest of this fight, since that healing was just without question the best thing that could have happened. The fight against the Shadow Queen was very, very close. She only had about 20 HP left. I was on the verge of death with every single one of my characters. However, I still had two entire life mushrooms with me. This was it, man. Flurry kept sucking on that evil witch until she left Peach's body, and that was the end of it. I had finally beaten the game with only the companions. So, to make all of this trouble official, can you beat Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door without Mario? Hell yes, you absolutely can. Thank you guys so much for watching and also for helping me reach 400 subscribers. That's just absolutely incredible. I thank you from the bottom of my heart and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.